Hello guys, it's me. Uh, listen, a game modes in Overwatch. That's a pretty big subject. Um, start with uh, obviously the praise portion because I do them too hard. Um, I love Control or King of the Hill, uh, Escort and Hybrid. Fantastic game modes. Very good. There, they uh, Overwatch would be less of a game without them. I absolutely adore those game modes and I love those maps. Not all of them. Some of them, are, some of them are bad. But even the bad control, escort, and hybrid maps are infinitely better than the other maps and the other game modes. Not just entirely because the maps are better, but also because of the game mode. So let's get into it. Uh, Overwatch has obviously a pretty big game mode issue, where it has an absurd amount of game modes in competitive. There are six, uh, which is fucking retarded in my opinion, but the game's the game, right? Uh, but the thing is, is when you have a lot of game modes, uh, generally speaking, you don't want to do that because it's just, it's very bloated, nobody likes it. But if you are going to have a lot of game modes, or game modes in general, you want the game modes to be good, you want them to be enjoyable, you want them to be competitive, things like that. It means that there's a wider variety for people to enjoy. Um, however, these game modes are just terrible, they're really, really bad. So, let's talk about why they're really bad. Let's start with the biggest defender, Clash. This is the worst game mode I think I've ever played in the history of a competitive game. Uh, is that hyperbolic? Absolutely. Um, but I genuinely can't think of anything worse. So we're just going to say that that's objective truth for now. Okay, why is Clash terrible? Okay, firstly, it's insanely defender sided, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, um... The issue arises in the fact that the game mode itself is not built to be that way, if you know what I mean, right? Like, if you have a defender-sided game mode, that would mean there has to be a clear distinction between there being an attacking side and there being a defending side, right? There has to be one team on that does one thing and a team that does another thing. But Clash doesn't have that. Both teams are attacking. So the fact that is it is defender sided means that the only time you would ever defend is when you are losing. So it's unfair to say it's defender sided and more fair to say that it's actually loser sided. The more you lose, the bigger advantage you gain by default, which I don't know what fucking mega mind at Blizzard thought of that, but that's fucking ridiculous that doesn't make any sense like imagine you're playing a professional sport and they're like sorry guys they're whipping your ass so hard um we're gonna make it that they're no longer allowed to get within 30 feet of the rim you know what i mean it's just like what the fuck is that rule it just it doesn't make any sense right so but losing is an advantage and the reason for that is because as you get closer to the the spawn of one of your opponent let's say team one let's say as team two beats team one and team two starts to get closer to the enemy spawn uh, team one starts to gain a bigger advantage because the map becomes more defender sided because as you get closer to the spawn the spawn gets more advantage towards the defenders whereas the 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 actual middle of the map is the most neutral that's the neutral point so that it's completely symmetrical on both sides completely balanced so the, if you lose that defend that that middle point the neutral point you have to go backwards into home territory the defending space where the attacking team then needs to attack a defender sided objective as their reward for beating them in a neutral fight the reward for winning in the neutral was to gain a map disadvantage just because that's how the game mode works fantastic this leads to the map being super fucking snowbally which of course is never a good thing uh that's just objectively terribly paced and without uh, pacing in overwatch you get a terrible game who could have seen that coming right but the reason it's so snowbally is because let's say for example i push the enemy team all the way back to their spawn we take a bad fight in their spawn they come back out they beat us they're going to cap their point push up to their next defended point and hold a super close choke to that neutral point near our spawn if they wipe us again they're going to get their spawn point uh, like that that middle point between their spawn and the neutral point and they're going to get a setup on the neutral point giving them an even bigger advantage in the neutral point so basically if I win the neutral point, win their, ter their home territory point, 
start fighting their spawn point and lose, I almost guarantee the fact that I'm going to get pushed back to the neutral point, which means it doesn't make sense to push to the spawn point, because if you do, you're more likely to get snowballed, which means you're more likely to lose more points. So you're better off just not trying to win. The best way to win in this game mode is to not try to win, because if you do, you get too big of a disadvantage. Who the fuck at Blizzard thought this was a good game mode? Also, why is it in comp the same season that it released? I don't know what Brainiac thought that was a good idea either. Classic Blizzard just making the most stupid decisions humanly possible. Uh, but, you know, I digress. That's just the game's the game, right? The game mode is not built to be finished. It's intentionally designed in the way that the timer is meant to tick out. Uh, and the reason it is done that way is because... I don't fucking know Blizzard is dumb, uh, where they don't like that you can finish maps sometimes. So the the best way to do it is to win on points. That's why the map gets more defender sided as you go, because you're meant to be winning on points, not just stomping them. The idea of this was obviously because they're like, okay, people are getting their fucking asses pounded in this game because the matchmaking is dog shit. So to try and circumvent the matchmaking sucking so much ass, we're going to make the game mode so skewed towards the people who are losing that stomps are not physically possible anymore so they've just completely removed a large part of the competitive integrity of the game because they like they don't like it when whiny crybaby gold players get rolled uh, which is you know fair enough they need money i the game's the guess their game they, 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 they want. obviously the game mode's terribly paced for example, let me give you a good example of good pacing. In Escort and Payload, you cannot physically just straight up win the game by default because you push to the enemy spawn and spawn camp them. That is not how it worked, because the only way to win is to push the payload. And the payload moves at a certain speed and gets progressively faster with more people on it. The more people on the payload, the faster the payload moves. But if there's more people on the payload, that means there's less people pushed up taking space, which means the enemy team that's defending is more likely to push through those less people to then try and get a comeback going. So then the the team pushing the payload has to make the decision of putting more people on the payload to make the payload go faster, but give up more map control or let the payload go small, uh, slower in uh, trading off, obviously, getting more map control for that. Beautifully paced. Absolutely fantastically built game mode. And you can tell it's a brilliantly made game mode because it came from a Valve game, Team Fortress 2. Who could have seen that coming? The best part of Overwatch wasn't even made by Blizzard themselves. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, but that's how the payload works, and that's why it's such a brilliant game mode, is because it forces the the actual players to work at a certain pace that allows the attacking team and the defending team uh, chances to actually win the game. Fantastically made. That's why the game mode is great. Uh, King of the Hill, obviously, is a little bit different, but King of the Hill works so well because the maps are built so beautifully, and... It doesn't allow for you to just like hard W key their spawn because the distances between the spawn and the point are shorter. So there's actually chances for you to just go with super quick heroes, run to the point, they'd have to come all the way back, things like that. The maps being smaller is what fixes the pacing of the game because it doesn't allow for like huge runnings to happen where people are running away from each other or running towards each other because eventually you get to the end of the map because the maps were smaller, which fixes the pace of Overwatch being a very quick game because the maps were smaller. It doesn't allow you to abuse the fact that you're so fast, which makes it a beautiful game mode because the maps are very good that's one of the reasons uh so that that was clash that's why clash is terrible there's probably more reasons but honestly i'm already bored of talking about it because it sucks next we'll talk about push because that that game mode is obvious that game mode is disgustingly dog shit is it as bad as clash no i don't think so clash is a hate crime in fact uh, but push is a war crime so they're slightly different eh? and one of them isn't real i'll let you figure out which one uh, okay, so flash. Uh, sorry, push. Why is why is push terrible? Well, push suffers from the same issues that Clash does, in the fact that it's insanely defender sided. And by defender sided, I obviously mean loser sided because both teams are attacking at the same time. There is no defending side, which means the more you lose, the bigger the advantage you gain because the maps become more defender sided as you go because they get closer to your spawn, and the maps are just built to be more defender sided as you get closer to the spawn, which doesn't make any fucking sense. But the game's the game. That's how it works. Now, the other reason the game mode is an absolute stomp fest, even when it's built that way, and it's progress. It it's primarily done because of the way you gain objective points in the game mode for example let's say the enemy team pushes 120 meters the only way for you to gain any point at all is to then push the bot 120 meters back to the spawn room or back to the middle point and then take another fight or take two fights to then actually start making any progress so the defending team has to win two fights to actually be able to get a point on the board 
Who thought this made any sense at all? I do not know, but that's how push works. Uh, so, for example, let's say uh, any team one has 120 meters on the board. The only way for team two to draw them is to get 240 meters because they have to run the bot from 120 meters to zero and then from zero to 120 again while pushing the, the thing. Now, obviously the speeds are different, but that doesn't make any sense. That's not fair. Uh, Avril said it would, and I don't usually agree with Avril, uh, a lot of the times me and him disagree a lot, but he said it very, very well, and the fact that, imagine you were playing King of the Hill, and the only way for you to gain a point in King of the Hill was to drain the enemy team's percentage before you could start gaining a point, um, obviously, that's fucking dumb, uh, so that's why it's not done that way. But push is another game mode that's built to not be finished, where the longer the game goes, the game is meant to be finished on points again like clashes where you're not really meant to get to the end of the map and the reason it's done like that is because of stomps they don't like the way the game is so stompy sometimes because the matchmaking fucking sucks so instead of fixing the matchmaking they deliberately rig the game modes to make them more and more loser sided so that you are less likely to just straight out stomp the enemy team though it still happens uh, because the matchmaking is that bad um so it's they're pretty stompy um but also not at the same time. It's it's weird. It's very weird. Uh, that's why push is just terrible. It's also very badly paced. It's another one of those game modes where you kind of can just like hard W key the enemy spawn. And it just kind of works because the way the maps are built. And the way the actual push bot moves. Like for example, if we win first fight on, let's say we're playing New Queen Street. If you win the first fight on New Queen Street, you're basically like two-thirds of the way into their fucking spawn already just standing there holding because there's really just nothing they can do about it but you know what i mean like the, the bot moves at the same speed with one or five people on it so you just throw like your brig on the on the thing and she can just pack you from like 500 miles away while she pushes the thing because the maps are so shit but not only are the maps terrible the game mode itself is just fucking awful so you can just basically like the it's badly paced is what i'm saying you can just basically hard w like you're deleting the parameter of the game needs to be paced at a certain way because you have access to the whole map at all times which is just bad like you being able to access the entire map all the time is just objectively bad when typically when it's done in sections it's easier to pace it out because the map can be more constricted in that way in the way that there are more sections so each section can have its own gimmick or it can have its own differently paced style where the map you know moves a certain way or whatever but because push has to be the way it is where both teams are attacking both at the same time it forces uh the pacing to be terrible now, you might say, well, King of the Hill. Both teams are attacking in King of the Hill. Well, like I said beforehand, the reason King of the Hill works is because you, it is a, it's a game mode where you have to fight directly on top of the point at all times. You kind of can't go forward. It's the same reason the hybrid first is as good as it is. You kind of have to fight on the point. You kind of can't go anywhere else unless on like some maps you can hold a little bit further up. Like you're not obviously standing directly on the point. But if you go any further than that, you're in their spawn and it doesn't make any sense. So because the maps are tight like that, but because push is obviously a thing where you're pushing a bot like very far, there is more map to traverse, which means the map have to be bigger. But because of the, the nature of the game mode, the whole map is accessible at all times, which is just fucking ass. It's just bad it's not good next is flashpoint flashpoint is just king of the hill with extra steps and where instead of a loading screen between the points you get to run there and the way they've tried to make the game mode go a bit faster is that the tick the point ticks faster so basically if you like okay the point ticks so fast you get like one or two fights per point I think you actually spend about 5 to 10% of the game mode actually fighting, whereas you spend the other half just running around and setting up, because the the point ticks so fast, like half the time it's not even worth leaving your spawn and trying to run there, because the point will finish before you get there, so you're better off just predicting where the next point will go and running there instead. It's so stupid, it doesn't make any sense. The maps look fantastic, but I don't know what the point of building such an enormous map is when you only play on five parts of the map. It's like literally 10% of the fucking map is used. The other 90% is just boring dog shit that you have to walk through. And God forbid when you win or lose a point, 
usually win. God forbid the, the position of the point favors the enemy team and you have to walk past their spawn door to actually get to the next point. Well, that happens all the time, by the way. It's just another terrible part of the game mode where the, the point can just spawn across the other side of the map 180 meters away and their spawn room's right outside of it. And if you want to actually go there, you just have to eat the fact that they're just invincible in their spawn room because that the map's fucking shit and that's just how it usually goes so the maps are bad the game modes are bad again it's badly paced it's one of those things where there's nothing constricting your usage of map control where you're able to just be wherever you want whenever the fuck you want which means there is just absolutely no reason to ever try and understand or, or respect the confines of the map at all you just get to go as fast as you fucking want wherever you want all the time because there is nothing stopping you from doing so whereas in a payload map it's obviously stopping you from just hard w king their spawn all day because there you lose the game if you do that you lose the objective right if you do that so you can't do that but you can do that in in flashpoint because the map is egregiously large giving you copious amounts of map control to do whatever the fuck you want whenever you want to now it's obviously not as bad as the other maps because it plays a little bit like king of the hill where you have to play on the point so if you do actually go and fight on it it's actually not that bad the majority of flashpoint's issues are the fact that the maps are egregiously large for no reason and the points tick so fast for no reason but otherwise, Flashpoint's probably the best out of all of these, and I would say I'd give Flashpoint a 5 out of 10. It's a palpable game mode. I'll play it. I don't like it. Now, is it better than Clash and Flashpoint? Absolutely. Listen, when it comes to Blizzard's, you know, track record for game modes, I'm pretty happy with Flash. I would take that over the other ones. So, you know, I gotta say, good job to the, to the makers of the Flashpoint game mode, because it could have been worse. You know, it could have been a lot worse. So, there you go, fantastic. Uh, but Clash and Push are just fucking diabolical. Th those game modes are unbelievable to me. I cannot physically believe that there's someone sat down and built this game mode and then was like, guys, look at this game mode that I... Or, you know, they're going to they're gonna design it. And they're going to go, guys, look how I design it. They're going to go, okay. And they're going to build the game mode. They're going to go, okay. And they're going to test it. And they're going to test all the parameters, the bot movement speed, how the maps work, things like that, where the spawns room should be, the pacing of things like that. And they go, yeah, okay, that's good. And then they're going to release it to a play test. People are going to play test the map and di different things. And they go, okay. And then they're going to go, okay, okay, then we're going to do some bug fixes and some QA and shit like that, okay. And then they're going to release it to the public for a demo and they're going to go, okay. And then they're going to release it to the game and go, okay. And not a single point in that whole process do they go, holy shit, we just created the worst fucking game mode of all time. Maybe we shouldn't release this, even though it seemed blatantly obvious the whole time. But maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic because maybe some people like it. You know, maybe some people like push. I know some people like push. If you like push... I'm not saying, listen, I'm glad you do, because, you know, if nobody did, then, well, let's just say it wouldn't be looking so good for Blizzard, so the fact that some people like it is is good for the game, but however, I will continue hating it until the day I die, uh, because it's it, because it's bad, it's just objectively terrible, I want, I will not have my mind changed, this is the point of the video where I go, I have gone past all of the reasons why I hate it, and I'm now getting into the, the nonsensical, illogical reasons of why, why I just don't like it. Uh, and this is where the comments say womp womp, right? That's typically like about a third of my videos are I don't like it, um, Sag. And then the other two thirds are logical reasoning as to why I dislike it. So there you go. Those game modes are dog shit. Um, I will not be having my mind changed because I am objectively correct. However, if you would like to try, I would I would love for you to try because I have changed my mind before. You know, I used to think Juno was brain dead and dog shit. Uh, and then I tried her for longer than 10 minutes and said, I'm just a dumbass, actually. This character is kind of sick. I love Juno. Juno is one of my favorite heroes in the game now. The homing missile lock-on thing is still dog shit and bullshit, and I don't like it. But... Oh, other than that, it's a beautifully designed character with a lot of with a lot of deep gameplay that I really enjoy. Um, also, Juno's pretty hot, so there you go. Uh, anyway, uh, goodbye. This was nonsense. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, baby. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.